So let's look at how the job submission is done at the client side. In the main program, uh, in in the client node, you call a you create a job object and call a submit method on it, either directly or via wait for completion method. The job object then creates an internal job client object and calls submit job internal on it. The job client object handles the job submission process at the client side. It gets the new job ID, checks the output, and copies the job resources. To get a new job ID, uh, job client makes a remote procedure call uh, on job tracker through a client stub. This stub is called as uh, job submission client in Hadoop code. Then the job client uh, checks the output specification of the job. If the output directory is not specified or already exists, an error is thrown. Uh, not the output uh, is checked by the output format class, not inside the job client. This essentially means the interfaces are pretty well written. Uh, let's look at how the uh, job resources are copied. Uh, the job resources being uh, config file, job jar, and information about displays. The destination addresses are specified by job submission file class. Uh, this includes the staging area, submission area, con the path to the config file, path to the job file, and the information about the split. The information about split is divided into two files, split meta file and split file. Uh, the split meta file is used only by the job tracker to create the mapper's locality structures. This, info this basically contains the information about where the split splits are so, uh, stored and how big the splits are. And this file is only used by job tracker, hence it's stored only on the job tracker file system. The second file is used by the mappers to know what exactly to do. It contains the location, uh, location as well as the byte offset of the split. So that mapper can go and retrieve it. Uh, now let's look at how exactly the job client copies the job resources. It first copy, copies the Java file onto a shared file system, in our case HDFS. It sets the replication factor to a very high number, 10. Uh, this replication number can be controlled by the property mapred.submission.replication. Uh, by keeping the replication factor high, we ensure that there are a lot of copies of the Java file across the cluster for the task trackers to copy them whenever they are started. Now let's look at how the splits and the config files are copied. Uh, to, first, we compute the splits. To compute the split, we call the input format class. Then the splits are uh, sorted according to the size. Uh, the logic essentially says that the biggest splits are processed first, and at the end, we process the smallest uh, splits. Uh, well, we can modify this logic by modifying the array.sort logic inside uh, job client's write split method. Essen uh, essentially, this is what we did uh, uh, in our paper uh, online aggregation for MapReduce job. So, first, the uh, we copy the meta file onto the job tracker by the path given by job submission files. Okay, this meta file is uh, represented by job split dot uh, split meta info uh, class. Then we copy the split file uh, into the HDFS. This is uh, represented by task split index class. Uh, the actual uh, writing of this split is done by split writer class. Uh, the replication factor is also set to a very high number, just as the job job file. And finally, the uh, job configuration file is copied onto job trackers file system, and the path is again provided by job submission files class. Note, we are still inside the job client's uh, submit job internal method. Okay, So once we are done copying all the job resources, which, which includes jar file, split file, and config file, we uh, make an RPC call to the job tracker, which essentially is submit job uh, method on the, of the job tracker class. That's it. We are done at uh, the job submission at the client side. Now let's look at uh, the job. What happens uh, on the job tracker side? 